Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we've got the QSP Gavial. Do you know what a Gavial is? Check this out. You got the nice eye right there. Yeah, it looks a bit like it. It's that crocodile with that really skinny snout, eh? Long, not so skinny, but uh, very, actually very healthy size blade right here. Good handle. This is a big knife. You know, it comes off my hand quite a bit and my hands are between large and extra large. That's what I have to, when I buy men's gloves, that's what I got to buy. Sometimes large, sometimes extra large, depends on who makes it. Around nine and 10 on the European men's glove sizes. So this is a big knife and it doesn't have a big weight. You know, it's under five ounces and uh, D2 steel. It only comes in three different colors, this blue, OD green, and then the black G10 version has got an all satin blade. But the blue and the green one have this black, it's a black stone wash kind of surface up there and then a the satin finish. So if you're interested in a knife like this, stick around, the full review's coming right now. So there you go. There's the Gavial or Gavale. Depends on uh, which pronunciation you're using. Let's do a size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. There it is. Let's line up the pivot pins. Bigger in the handle, bigger in the blade. This is not a small knife. The Ontario Rat 1 is the larger of the uh, Ontario Rats. So it's a beautiful knife in my opinion. We've got a very long slender blade, still over an inch this way. Uh, right at the uh, one inch point, it's an inch from the sharpness toil. I mean, it's still an inch this way. I do a lot of my measurements right at that point because a lot of our cutting happens right about an inch from the end. And that's one of those reasons why small knives, you know, are very useful. Let's get into this knife, the blade here. D2 steel. And they put the uh, D2 right there on the flipper tab. Not bad. And uh, the flipper works very well. Light switch method. Push it down on just a slight angle. Comes flying out. Ceramic ball bearings on this QSP, just like most QSP knives. Maybe all of them, I'm not sure. So good ball bearings in there. The uh, detent, the detent's a little bit soft on this one. Uh, I'm going to see if I can make the detent a little firmer later on. But it's not bad. It's, you know, between, between good and soft. So it's not super soft or anything. I can make the blade deploy just by doing a and stopping suddenly. You're going and some people call that centrifugal, uh, but it's really not. That's inertia. Your hand stops and inertia makes the blade come out. And the only reason it rotates is because it's fixed at one point, you know, and that makes the rotation. But it's inertia is the force that's at play. Uh, not that our government uh, knows about that. <laughs> I'm a Canadian, of course, Canadian cutting edge. And uh, centrifugal knives are illegal in Canada. I would not call this a centrifugal knife. Uh, you know, it deploys with the flipper, and uh, you can deploy it with that hole right there, as like that. And if you get good at it, you can flip it open using the hole from the bottom. Um, I'm just not good at that yet, but I do okay. I got it to open, not with any you know quick force or anything, but it works. I guess with some practice, I could get better. I wouldn't mind if that hole was just a tiny bit bigger for that bottom flicking, but not bad at all. Uh, Saber grind, which is a flat grind. The blade keeps its full thickness uh, until the black runs out right there. And then it starts tapering down. Got a nice look to it. Chamfered edge right here. A little bit of jimping there on the riser. So your thumb can rest in there quite securely. That's quite nice. Sharpness toil is just big enough. You know, maybe they could have made it a little bit bigger. 
that's not really a forward choil, but if you just use the tip of your finger, uh, if you want to use it that way, you know, that can work, not a problem. Uh, but it's generally made for your hand like this. Uh, you can bring your hand to the back if you want extra reach. And I still have a full grip on it right back here. You can see that. And uh, so lots of reach with this thing if you want to. Now let's talk about the handle now some more. The uh, chamfer on the edge here has got, I guess maybe I call that chamfer jimping all along the uh, belly and up here uh, close to your thumb rest area. Got a uh, cutaway there of the G10 for holding your hand this way. Your thumb just rests in there very well. And uh, you've got jimping on the liner release right there. So it's easy to get there to release the uh, liner lock. You've got a uh, pocket clip that's right and left and they give you a nice spacer there. So, yep, that's nice right there. Nice lanyard hole right there. You've got uh, the button screws, but they're recessed. Fairly thick liners, but they're very skeletonized. And uh, on this side, you've got the pocket clip. Access for your screwdriver to get in there to those. Those are uh, T6s. Pocket clip has got good standoff. And... Um, there is enough space there. It easily goes in and out of my pocket. I've had no problem with it, you know, coming right to the bottom like it should. And the clip has got the flat top here. And uh, the pocket easily starts underneath there and slides in. You know, it's a good pocket clip. I do wish that they would have made this body screw for, for the uh, spacer here be one of the screws for the pocket clip. They would have had to maybe move it down down that way a little bit and then the lanyard hole could still be in the same spot you know that would I think that would have been a better thing but now you've got a little bit of the knife sticking out of a pocket but not an awful lot let's take a look like I said it rises over no problem slides in and goes right to the bottom every time you know even if your jeans your denim's pretty thick if you're wearing blue jeans, that's not that bad of a look right there. It doesn't grab too much of attention. The green one would kind of blend in fairly well as well. And of course, the black one would too. So I don't mind that there's some knife sticking out. It actually gives you some more to grab. Um, and, you know, the hole here for your screwdriver, that also gives you some texture for your thumb to grab onto to pull it out. So no real complaints there. Just a little bit of an idea of a way to make it even better. We've got a lot of belly here, and then it swings back. So you've got security in the hand from slipping back that way. And then this big forward choil, you know, you've got security in case you need to do some piercing you know, through some leather or whatever you need to pierce through. You know, the tip is made very well for piercing. And you've got security so that your hand won't slip over and, you know, cut your fingers. So that's a good thing. The handle's very comfortable. The liners are so thick that they had to cut off a little bit right there, do a little bit of a relief cut. So the uh, liner lock arm could be uh, given that tension that it needs to be pushing on. It's a little bit hard to see. There's not, there's not a way to get a lot of light in there for pictures, but the uh, lockup is very good. Let me turn some more light on here, see if that'll help. Lockup is fully engaged and yet there's room for it to wear across you want to see the inside of this knife well let's take it apart and take a look and see what we can see here it is taken apart and as is very common with qsp knives the screws are very nicely made they're nice and hard and the fit with the uh, drivers is perfect they just lock in and uh there's no play, well, tiny bit of play. There has to be some play, but nice snug fit. Uh, pivot pins, D-shaped, not free spinning. Locks into the one side here. Uh, the other screws fit very well. Ceramic detent 
and very tiny ceramic ball bearing. Lots of skeletonization to keep the weight down. I like this. The uh, studs here have got a little decorative effect on there. It looks kind of nice. T8 screws right there. And uh, yeah, it's a nice knife. Let's go over all the sizes, dimensions, and those kinds of things. I'll leave this on the screen while I'm doing that. Once this is gone, I'm done talking about the dimensions and things. The weight of this knife, 136 grams, 4.8 ounces. So yeah, under five ounces for this big knife. The sharpness from the factory, I measured 165 bests, 200 and less is considered sharp, so sharp from the factory, and it did cut quite well. I do testing, I cut all kinds of stuff with these knives to test, and I cut until it gets hot in the hand or until it just doesn't get hot in the hand. And this knife, very comfortable, and uh, comfortable in the hand for a lot of cutting. Oh, I was doing dimensions and sizes. I get distracted sometimes with myself. The uh, cutting edge length, 10 centimeters, right exactly. Uh, 3.938 of an inch, so a four inch cutting edge, basically. The blade length, 10.17 centimeters, 4.004 inches. So there you go, like I said, a four inch blade. The uh, blade thickness right here, it's 3.47 millimeters, which is 0.1365 of an inch. So over an eighth of an inch thick, that's nice. Blade depth, I measure it one inch up from the sharpness coil. 2.43 centimeters, 0.958 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, again, at that one inch spot, 0.61 millimeters, 24 thousandths of an inch. I uh, do wish it was a little bit thinner. 24 thousandths isn't bad, but I would like it to be closer to 20. So uh, that's about half a millimeter, 20 thousandths. The grind angle, the grind angle on one side uh, at that one inch point, 18.1 degrees on one side, 21.9 degrees on the other. Uh, the edge angle varies along the blade a little bit, but not dramatically so. And with D2 steel, I would sharpen it up to at 20 degrees per side. The handle now, the handle length is 12.56 centimeters, 4.945 inches. So, yep, uh, 5 inch, 4 inch, just under 9 inch. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the grip area in here. It's about 11 centimeters, about 4.4 inches. The handle thickness is 1.49 centimeters. That's 0.588. So yeah, this is made for big hands, uh, but that's not too big at all. It's very comfortable. Uh, men's small, uh, you guys probably don't want to hold this knife very long. It might feel a little bit too big for you guys. And now for the handle depth, the uh, handle depth this way is 2.6 centimeters, 1.02 inches. When the knife is closed, the biggest spot is right here where this bump on the blade back here. I never count the flipper. Maybe I should, maybe I, I don't know, but I just never do. Uh, the blade depth here closed 3.26 centimeters, 1.283 of an inch. And the total length of the knife when the blade is exposed, 22.82 centimeters. Oh, I didn't convert it to inches. Let's convert it to inches right now. Just under nine inches, just barely. I guess it depends on what angle you get on. You go up like this, and now it looks nine inches. You go like this, and it looks like, oop, go like this, and it's about nine and eight. Well, an eighth under, well, just under that. It's all about angles and things. That's why I don't like to measure on camera. I always measure uh, with the knife straight across. And so even if the handles yeah, go like this on both the leading edge of the handle and the tailing edge of the handle, I still measure straight across. I don't go like this. And you know, if it's got straight edges like this and then measure across. Now I always measure when the knife is horizontal across the space and see how far it is. So that's the measurements. How much does this knife cost? Well, you can get all three of them at White Mountain Knives. He just got stock in, he told me. Uh, he sent me an email a couple hours ago, and uh, I had all the uh, stuff written up for it. 
and I was ready to review it now that he's got stock in because you can get the best price at White Mountain Knives. If you're in North America, that's the place to get this knife. $49.77, but you save 10% with the code CCE. And then it costs $44.79 American. Free shipping in the USA, inexpensive shipping to Canada. This knife is not available in a lot of places over in Europe. I did find it on Messer Depot, but only in the black G10 with the full satin blade. Uh, they've got it for 48.64 euros. But, uh, I'll put links, as many links as I can down there to make it easy for you guys to go get your own. The action on it is smooth, easy to open, easy to close, light in the hand, very comfortable, good grip. It's, I think it's got a nice look to it. I like the bright blue, that's why I asked for it. Well, I bought it. I used my own shekels to buy this thing. This is a nice knife. If you're looking for one of these, do you want me to go over the pros and cons one more time? Very comfortable, good grip. Love this chamfering, nice belly. It's got a cool look to it. The blade, very functional, great for piercing, quite strong. Of course, not designed for prying or anything. D2 is a strong steel. It's sharpened fairly well. Uh, of course, don't rely on the factory sharpness. You will need to sharpen your knife at some time and then the factory sharpness issue is you know, totally moot. And uh, that's why I don't talk too much about factory sharpness, except to show that factories just don't sharpen their knives all that well, especially in the budget area. It, so uh, don't count on factory sharpness when you're talking about a knife that's under a hundred bucks, well, even over a hundred bucks. Uh, you need to know how to sharpen knives if you want to be a budget knife uh, carrier. Even though I love QSP knives, they're just great. You know, like I said, 18 degrees on one side, almost 22 degrees on the other. So it's almost three degrees different, you know, one side to the other. So like this, but of course not that dramatic. Instead of being exactly down the middle at 20 degrees per side, it's because they get sharpened by hand, you know, and they, they move the knife like this sometimes as they're going across, you know, either the belt or the stone to sharpen it. And it's just natural for there to be a variability in here. So, Check out my sharpening videos if you're looking for a good sharpener. The cons on this thing, a little bit thick behind the grind, and I wish the pocket clip was uh, tied in with this back spacer right there, the, the back uh, pin right there. Lanyard hole is definitely big enough for 550 paracord. It's just got a good look and feel to it. I'm, I've really enjoyed this knife. Yeah, I cut all kinds of things in my testing, and with the reach on this thing, you know, especially if you put your hand here at the back, so much reach, so much usefulness. Um, when I put it down, I don't lose it because it's got this bright color, but of course you can go with black or OD green. So there you go. The Gavale. It's like having 110 teeth. <laughs> That's what the Gavail has, 110 teeth. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you're a Patreon supporter, I very much appreciate your support. It makes a big difference to this channel. And if you want to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash CCE. I would very much appreciate it. Otherwise, uh, use my links, use my coupon codes, those kinds of things. That all helps the channel. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and watching the advertisement, the one video that I allow one video advertisement I allow per video. Thanks for letting those play at least two thirds of the way through. That really does make a difference. And uh, till next time, remember, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.